And I welcome you here today. Happy to have everybody here tonight. This is a great turnout. We're happy to see so many people here um, to share their thoughts and their concerns. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the legal notice as information for our audience. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metro Board of Fair Commissioners today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the board's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact your own independent legal counsel. I am going to call the meeting to order and first recognize those members of the Metro Council that are here. We have Vice Mayor Jim Schulman somewhere in the house. Jim. We have council member at large, Berkeley Allen. Berkeley, where are you? And we have council member Tom Cash. Did any other council members sneak in that I didn't see? Raise your hand if you're here. We have former councilman, he calls himself a recovering council member, Dwayne Dominey. So let me just share some of the rules of public comment because we're going to go directly into that. Um, we'll call the proponents up first to speak. And then when all the proponents have spoken, I will then call up the opponents to speak. Each person will have two minutes to speak. Laura will be keeping time. And we have some placards that we will show you so that you know how long you have to speak and when your time is up. Please do not go above the two minutes that are allocated, or I will have to turn off your mic, and I don't want to do that. Um, when you come up, please share your name, your address, and your zip code. That will be a big, big help. Um, if you are a proponent, please line up at the lectern. It saves a lot of time if you want to speak if it saves a lot of time if you want to speak if you'll go ahead and line up at the lectern thank you you will note that during the meeting Commissioner Hartley will be leaving as he has another obligation he will be, however, once he gets back to his home, he gets to sit and watch the video once we've gone home and gone to bed. So, so Commissioner Hartley, do you want to add anything to that? Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say I had another meeting tonight, so I really want to come out. Uh, I think the public's engagement and the issues are very important. So we're really glad you guys are all here and we're looking forward to hearing from you. I'm sorry I can't stay in person, but I will stay and watch every single person's comment on video after this meeting and uh, just bear with us as we uh, work through this very complex issue. Thank you all so much. Okay, so since I gave Commissioner Hartley the floor, do any of the other commissioners want to say a quick word? And I mean quick. Seeing none, we'll move on. Please share your name, your address, and your zip code. Uh, hi, my name is Dylan. I live at 601 Lucian Drive of Gooseville, Tennessee. The zip code is 37072, and Thank I drive you. the number 60 Legend car. Uh, hi, I'm Galen Clark. I live at 3400 New Hope Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Uh, zip code 37075, and I drive the number 38 Legend car. Chad Barker, 924 Reliance Drive, Franklin, Tennessee, 37067. I'm 19 years old, and I drive the number 10 Legend car. I'm Landon Cordell. I live at 4003 Garibaldi Court. Their zip code is 37174, and I'll be driving the Legend's car this year. I'm 12 years old. Hey, I'm Boston Oliver, uh, 5180 Shores Road, 37128, and uh, driver of the number 88 Pro Late Model. I'm Robbie Taylor, uh, 
15 years old, driver of the number 66 Pro Late model, address 3078 Old Green Bar Pike, zip, zip code 37073. Thank you. I'm Gavin Veach, I'm 15 years old, 6577 Daly Covington Road, zip code 37046. I'm the driver of the 9V US Legacy car. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, I'm Gary Baker, um, address is Centerville, Tennessee, in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, Centerville address 37033, and I forgot the Franklin zip code. But I was about an hour and a half in the car getting here. I'm trying to think the whole time, how do I condense 70 years down to two minutes? That's how long, 70 years, I've been, in one way or the other, associated with this track. Gave up, cannot be done. Therefore, I think I'd be better just to mention two bullet points for your consideration. Number one, historical. Uh, the last two years, we've seen far too many um, iconic historical statues and markers in this country destroyed. It would be a shame if we saw one of this magnitude here in our own city destroyed when we have uh, an institution as old as this is, it dates back to the origin of the prior century. Uh, this is something that would be hard to explain to our children, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren that it happened on our watch. More importantly, the future. We can talk about economic impact studies and all that, and of course there can and will be one done here. Um, I don't know what it'll show. I haven't seen one in many years now, but I know it'd be something north of 60 million. It could be twice that, and it would be accurate. This is so much, so much bigger. Oh, shucks. This is so much bigger than just a one ball afternoon. This is a weekend. People come in here. The last, the last Winston Cup date we ran was... Uh, well, we did an analysis of the advance tickets. Over 42 states were represented, and that was back when Nashville was not what it is today. This speedway helped Nashville become the tourist mecca that it is. I'll cut it short and end with one comment. Well, I'll just go to one discussion that you Your time's need to be aware up. of. I'm sorry. That was, I'll just tell you this one and I'm through. Um, it was a discussion with the governor of the state of Georgia. Your time's up. Um, everybody, I'm running the meeting. Let me run the meeting. Thank you. It was a discussion with the governor of Georgia. And one on Thank you, but this is not fair to anybody else in the room. So okay. please sit down. I appreciate I I it. Thank you. If I can help you Thank all you in so any way, much. please call me. Thank you so much. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. Rudy. <laughs> My name is Rudy Kalis, uh, 7808 Aslan Court in Nashville, 37221. Uh, I grew up near a racetrack up in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, the mile there. And when I came to Nashville back in the 70s as a broadcaster, I covered this, countless of race, stock car races. We would go all over the South NASCAR, go down to Daytona. And if I'm down to, in Daytona, a lot of people would say we're from Nashville, got the camera crew. Hey, I love Nashville. Why? They tell me three things. One, country music. Number two, Jack Daniels. Number three, stock car racing. And I said, really, is that so interesting? We were told that more people from the Middle Tennessee area go to Daytona for racing than from any other part of the country. So I know we're becoming cosmopolitan, but I also think about the fact that thousands of people from all over the world come to the United, come to Tennessee each year. They wear cowboy hats, they put boots on, they want to hear the music, they want to have that, uh, that entertainment that's all around them. And so this is part of the history, as Gary said, for, for Nashville of what we stand for. And what Bristol is willing to do to make the whole stuff this whole thing, make it family friendly, to make it strong. I think it's part of the heritage. We can we want to keep our identity that people can come here two miles from downtown where they can visitors can come to the, to our track. I think it's a gold mine that we have here. I hate to lose it. I think this track stands for the history of Nashville back to the 1900s, and it stands for what we as Nashvillians believe in. We're not going to be like everybody else. We're the best, hottest city in the country, and we want to be that way because we're country folks and racing is part of the country. So thank you thank you please hold your applause do I, I get his 21 seconds or no I'm no. going to ask once please hold your applause thank you You're John up. Dwyer 909 a Potter Lane 37206 
You all have a lot of hard decisions. This is not one of them. You have a gold standard company wanting to invest in the most historical short track in this country. The people that support this are participants in this economy. They are not spectators. This is a great three-day town, and you know it. They come, they're loyal, they'll spend, they'll leave. Many of them live here and will go back to their zip codes in Middle Tennessee, and they will come back again. This is a loyal sport. You want authenticity? The greatest songwriters in the world, not just country, songwriters, music, and racing. And in all due respect, this track has been here for nearly 120 years. And I mean this with all due respect. But for the folks that are against this because of the sound noise, and that has been resolved with a plan. Please hold your comments. Everyone gets an equal opportunity to speak. In all due respect, you moved to the racetrack. The racetrack did not move to you. This is an opportunity. Thank you. Uh-uh, please. Thank you. My name is Adam Lanning. I live at 513 Moore Avenue, 37203, about 1,000 feet from here. Um, I'm here to talk in support of the racetrack. Um, I'm 41 years old, and I grew up in Antioch just across from where Starwood Amphitheater was. When I was young, my dad used to bring me up here to this racetrack, and I have fond memories as a child. This is back when you could bring a cooler of beer to the racetrack. Um, and I've seen what happened. I know there's people in this room that have great memories of Starwood Amphitheater, and it was a real shame when it went away. And I don't want the same thing to happen to this racetrack. Uh, there's... There's plenty of opportunity to debate this, and, and yes, there is some noise. When I moved into this neighborhood eight years ago, I knew that 10% of the year, I was going to have to deal with some noise. That's part of living in this neighborhood. Like you said, I moved here knowing what to expect, and that's what I get. So I, I just don't want to see this opportunity go to waste. I think that it is uh, something positive for Nashville. And I think we can all agree that, um, you know, if this goes and gets dilapidated and, and doesn't get fixed, then what are we going to get another apartment development there? You know, that's, you know, we've got a green space where Greer Stadium was. So people are saying, oh, tear it down and put a green space. Well, we have one about 2,000 feet that way, half a mile. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Please hold your applause. Good evening. I thank you for your patience. I know you've heard from me before. My name is Joe Williams. I live at 106 Pebble View Drive in Franklin, Tennessee, 37064. I want to touch on just a couple of things quickly because I think I got a little different perspective. I am the last remaining staff member from the last cup race that was held at this racetrack in July of 1984. It's a long story, we won't go there. But I can tell you that since that time, there are so many differences. One, the place has been ignored by Metro for the most part. I think we'll all agree with that. But the things that I see in this, the, the discussion about noise, the noise is gonna get better. Trust me, I remember what it was like. The noise is gonna get better because you can't argue with the science of the plan that's been put together. More importantly, I know there's some issues about traffic, and I think that's a, that's a legitimate concern. But I can also tell you that over the years, I have watched the folks at Bristol Motor Speedway and all of their racetracks move 150,000 people out in less time than it takes some folks to move 30. So you're talking about pros at what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And the other thing is, I think this racetrack is not recognized sometimes as the ripple effect that it has. Nashville's a pond. This is a ripple effect. My friend Bob McCracken, who is the Vice President and General Manager at Town & Country Ford and Nissan of Rivergate, I saw him today and he said, would you speak for me? Would you tell them some things? And I said, sure. He said, tell them to understand that for 30 years that I've been involved there, 
Because of it, we've sold more cars. That means more tax revenue. We've expanded our business. That means more property tax revenue for the city. And we've hired more people. In addition, they've given away over $75,000 to the Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt because of their racing endeavors and the folks that they have supported here. This is only a good thing. This is only good for Nashville. It's good for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Fogarty. I live at 601 Hamilton at the corner of Hamilton and Martin, um, which is, I guess, half a mile from here. Um, I moved to Wedgwood, Houston two years ago because I wanted to be in the center of a really thriving neighborhood. Um, I was excited about all the development happening. I was excited that I could kind of walk to places, even though that's another issue. Um, but from what I understand that Bristol's trying to do, they're trying to make something better. We have a fairground with a racetrack already, and they're trying to improve it. Um, I'm excited about that. I want things to be better. Um, when I moved here two years ago, I had no interest in soccer. I'm now a season ticket holder. I go every game. I feel the same way about NASCAR. And um, the only thing I would ask of the city and of the venues here, that you consider how to make our neighborhood more walkable if you're gonna have all these venues um, bringing thousands of people. So I support Bristol. I'm ex excited about what they're doing, but consider all of the stuff that's gonna infiltrate our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Ronnie Campbell, 723 Gloucester Lane, Nashville, 37221. As y'all look around, you see that everybody here comes from all walks of life, all demographics. The new stadium that's going to be built, we know it's going to get approved. It's a $2 billion stadium. The only people that will ever compete on that field are a bunch of multimillionaires. Nobody here will ever have the opportunity to even step foot on that field. The field of dreams that Bristol wants to build here, all of us can compete on it, everybody from every walk of life. So there's a pretty big distinction between the two. And then I just wanted to tell you guys how exciting it's going to be for you guys the night of that first cup race, because it's going to happen. You guys, when they do the flyover, you hear the national anthem, and they do the gentlemen start your engines, I promise every single one of you, if you see Norm Parton that night, if you see me, you see Joe Weems, you see a lot of people in this room, you're going to feel energy that you didn't even know existed because it's going to be the culmination of one of the greatest things Nashville has ever accomplished. Um, again, when they start those engines, you'll be kind of glad they don't have really, really good mufflers on them because you're going to feel that to your bones, through your core, and you will never forget that moment the rest of your lives, and neither will we. Thank you all. Thank you. My name's Melissa Smithson. I live at 4714 Delia Drive in Antioch, um, and I'm a former neighbor here. So, um, dear fair board and commissioners, uh, commissioners and chairman, I know I speak on behalf of 72% of the Nashvilleians who voted to keep the racetrack at the fairgrounds and to improve the facility. I know that I am thrilled that we are at this point, and having the fair board bring on a partner like SMI is more than we could have asked for. This partnership will bring this jewel of a racetrack back to its luster and making Nashville the place to go to watch a NASCAR premiere short track racing. Enjoy some live music and hospitality that we offer and hopefully return to attend a Titans football game, soccer, live music, and just enjoy our city for what it all has to offer. This partnership will be vital in our economy and tourism as it will add a whole new audience as millions across the world will watch this partnership will help support all the great hotels here and those that are coming online soon. The partnership with SMI will create jobs to support it, including event planners, security, personnel, vendors, more restaurants, skilled trades, as well as many ancillary companies that will follow. This partnership will showcase our city to 200 plus businesses and corporations traveling to NASCAR races. They will see why we are the city to come for for conventions, vacation, and will showcase how business and family friendly we are. In conclusion, SMI is our answer to bring this great historic racetrack back to what it once was, taking the burden from the taxpayers and assuming all the risk. By accepting this partnership, you will have the honor, you would have honored the citizens of Nashville who voted overwhelmingly for the racetrack to stay and be improved. SMI is willing to do the investment and hard work, it's a win-win for everyone. Thank you. I wanna just interrupt one minute and apologize because I forgot to do something. Um, I need a show of hands of everyone that is a proponent 
that is for this project? Raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. And now I need to see the show of hands of all who are in opposition. I totally forgot to do that before and I apologize. Okay, go ahead and come on up, thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Kuhn. I am a homeowner at 2213A 11th Avenue South, um, 37204. Um, and I'm, let me just look down at my notes. I uh, just wanted to say that I am really, really proud of living in Nashville. Um, and I'm really, really thankful for all the work that you guys do. I was really proud yesterday when the women's national team played on our field at Geodis Park. And I love living in a city. And I'm really grateful to live in a city that people want to come do amazing things, that people want to come visit, that companies want to pour their money into our grounds and take the money away, uh, the burden on the taxpayer and take it on them and be able to watch NASCAR, be able to watch soccer. I'm a season ticket holder for Nashville SC and so this project in particular, I love the extra parking, but I also love the work that you guys do. I've also been to the exotic pet fair, which is a lot of fun here at the fairgrounds. And I really enjoy the fact that there are things to do in this city that it's moving and shaking. And I want us all to consider um, supporting that and supporting uh, an amazing thing that we get to be a part of. To be quite frank, not a big NASCAR fan, but I do love that people want to spend their dollars in our city. And there are a lot of other cities that would kill for this opportunity. And so I'm thankful to live in Nashville. I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful for the work that you guys do. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi there. Uh, my name is Chris Lloyd. I live at 2863 Meadow Glen in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. I am a proponent. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. all last year on national television said, Nashville, build us a track. Build us the track at the fairgrounds like we used to race on and we'll come. Said that race after race after race. National TV, YouTube it. It's out there. Nashville needs to do it. Thank you. Thank y'all for letting us speak tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm a component of the 72% too that have uh, voted and pushed the issue to save our fairgrounds and to have NASCAR come to Nashville. I'm, I'm, I'm living at 539 Fairlane Drive. I've been here 21 years living in this district and I've lived in Woodbine for 65 years. And uh, it's a part of my fabric, this, this fairgrounds is, it's a part of my fabric. And uh, I've been working for 13 years with Save Our Fairgrounds. And uh, I think it'd be a great venture to have Bristol Motor Speedway come here and enhance our track. And the sound problem wouldn't be no problem at all. We've got the sound problem with the stadium up here for soccer. We've got that conquered. And it'd be the same kind of issue with our speedway. And uh, this is the it city. And it's time for it to happen at our speedway. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate everybody coming tonight, and we look forward to having our NASCAR to Nashville. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all, please don't forget to give me your zip code if you don't mind. Hello again. My name is Sutherland Marlin House, 38401. Um, if you don't remember me, my name, I'm a wife, daughter, granddaughter, sister, and former driver of the Nashville Fairgrounds. We once again are here to ask you to please consider all the benefits for the surrounding community and racing community that having Bristol operating this historical place could provide. I know that some of y'all on the board and some of y'all in the crowd don't understand the passion many of us have for keeping this racetrack alive. I could stand up here all day and talk about what this track means to my family and thousands of others, but I know we all don't have the time for that. Not everyone is going to enjoy the same sports and hobbies, and that's okay. But what we do ask is to look beyond what you may personally enjoy to see the mutual benefits to be had. This deal is not going to increase property taxes on Davidson County residents. It will help shift current costs off of taxpayers, and economic impact could be endless for the community. We usually go to Pensacola, Florida twice a year for my husband to race, and just between our lodging and other activities, not including racetrack expenses, we spend upwards to $20,000 a year. That is just friends and family of one driver, not pit crew, just friends and family. 
Besides the economic impact the improved racing will have, there will also be parking added, which I think we can all agree on is much needed for this growing community. And there would also be sound barriers to help reduce the noise on the few occasions the track is in use. Mr. Baker brought up to me that when he spoke to the governor of Georgia, that he said one weekend for Atlanta Motor Speedway running was made more money than three Super Bowls. Just think about what that could do. Bringing Bristol in would be great for the community, great for our local racing, and can provide endless opportunities for all involved. Thank you, Bristol, for your faith in our track, and thank you, Fairboard, for looking at this with open minds. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I grew up in Hermitage. I'm, that's my address now. It's 37076. Uh, I was actually born here 70 years ago, and on Thursday during the races out here on the mile dirt track. I, my, what my mother got, had to rush, be rushed to the hospital there at Baptist Hospital, and that's when I was born here. At, so I've been here 70 years at this track. Um, so I've got a, it's just a tradition in my family, the state fair and the racetrack was. Now we've lost the fair, but, uh, you know, what can I say? But this is a chance for uh, a modern cosmopolitan city to have a nice track that if somebody else is willing to put 50 million into this, I mean, that's pretty good to me. And uh, I just think it would draw a lot of people here and I don't, I, I see it as a win-win for everybody, really. And I don't know about the noise. I agree. I didn't grow up thinking it was noisy out here. Uh, when I was eight, nine years old and my daddy would take me to Daytona, when I heard that car go around the track, I thought I was listening to music. I, I just thought it was the greatest thing in the world, you know, but that's me. But uh, anyway, I know y'all have a lot you have to do. And um, I just know my taxes went up quite a bit when uh, the football field was built, but I was for bringing that in here. I think it's been great to help Nashville grow. But um, I don't want to see what my life done away with, you know, <laughs> when here's somebody willing to pay for it. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sadie Seegers. I live at 1115 Woodville Drive, 37204. Um, so I live in the 12th South area, and I just wanted to speak to you guys today to support um, the renovations of the Speedway at the fairgrounds. I currently have been impacted by the sound in the past, and so I'm excited to have a decrease in that with the new technology. Um, I'm also I'm happy with the promise of sound reduction, and I know it will be a positive impact for everyone in the area. Um, I'm also excited about the increase in parking. Thank you. Hello, guys. I'm, my name is George Saldana. I live at 62 East Thompson Lane, 37211, right down the street here. Uh, I think all you guys have been doing a great job, and the icing on the cake right now is having somebody else pay for to finish this place. And I guarantee you that you, you bring uh, NASCAR here, it's going to be an awesome. And um, you can stand proud and you'd be well respected in this town, especially by us guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Good evening. My name is Matt Relic. I live at 1109 South Douglas Avenue. 37204, so just about five, six minutes from here. Been there a little over three years, and I just wanted to throw my support for the restoration of the track. I've just been very excited to see all the, the redevelopment that's going on in this neighborhood and in this city. Uh, and with the new soccer stadium and the upgrade to the fairgrounds uh, a few years ago, just having that historic track restored to its previous grandeur. I mean, it's just very, very exciting to, to, to see that take place and to just recapture that history of, of racing here in Nashville. So um, excited to see how that uh, comes forward going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Ernest Morgan. I uh, live at 409 Merritt Avenue. Um, so just a few blocks, few blocks from here, uh, here in Wedgwood, Houston. Um, until about a week ago, I was on the board of SNAP, so the local um, uh, or the organization that represents Wedgwood, Houston. And about a week ago, I uh, was asked to leave the organization because of uh, the perceived uh, 
stance that I had with, uh, with just trying to make sure that everyone had a voice in the, in the community. And I had not made my decision at that point because I still wanted to learn as much as I could and, uh, and make an informed decision. Um, the board felt like my voice was very different than everyone else's on the board and asked me to leave. So um, that was very frustrating. And uh, I am now doubling down on, on this particular project. So I think it is the right project for the neighborhood. I think it's the right project for the city. Um, everything that I have personally read, and I've literally gone back and read every newspaper article that I could find on this um, to help me get to a place with the right context so that I could approach it in the right way, or at least the way that I felt was the right way. Um, I believe everything has good and bad to it. So there's pros and cons, and I can sit and talk about that all day. But at the end of the day, I think it's the right thing to do for us as a neighborhood and for us as a community in general. Thank you very much for everything that you do. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dwayne Domini. I've resided in 101 Cherokee Place in the United Nations of Antioch. That's a zip code 37013. I am proud to be here. I want to talk about three H's. History. On this property, there was automobile racing in 1904. The month was June. Several months before the first subway ran in New York City. On this property, the fairgrounds, it's the only property owned by the city of Nashville, only one, that has consistently for over 95 of 110 years made a profit. Feel free to repute that if you can. It's been 12 years, it hadn't been done yet, so it'll be fun. I want to talk about, that's history. I want to talk about heritage. The heritage of Nashville has been made up by our history. The people that have lived here, the people that have worked here, the people that have raced here on this track, people that have operated other events and venues and had business on this property. That history is important. And we destroy that history at our peril as a city because it's a foundational premise upon which the heritage of our city is built. And then hope. I visited this property, the racetrack specifically with my dad, my dad before he passed. My wife, one of her first racing events was right here on this property. She wasn't really that excited, but my children enjoyed it. And I have a grandson now, he's 15 months old. And so I hope soon be able to take my grandson over here so he can enjoy that as well. Because that has been part of the heritage of the city. And it's time we make it the show place it ought to be. And Bristol has agreed to come in and help do that without the cost of taxpayers. Because this property has for historical purposes always funded itself with a minor few exceptions. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing the work done by Bristol Motor Speedway and the amazing things it'll do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shane Smiley, Brush Hill Road, Nashville 37216. For 13 years, I've been bringing this backpack with these samples of sound absorbing wall to fairgrounds and council. For the same 13 years, I spent 13 years ago, I spent three months doing homework on mufflers from all the national manufacturers. When we wanted to test those nine manufacturers that sent samples, we asked for two days to test. The board at that time gave us two hours. We were able to knock down the sound by 16 dB in those two hours, which according to sound professionals I spoke to this afternoon is the equation of about 60% of a perceived uh, deficit in sound at that point. There are things we can do to do better with that. At the same time that the muffler program went in, there was a neighborhood advisory group put forward that met with the track promoter and the executive director on a monthly basis during the season. They discussed any issues, and it was the job of the executive director to come back to the board and bring those issues to the board. You can look through the minutes since of the last 13 years. You're going to find very, very few issues. So when you start hearing now that there is this systemic sound issue, why, has, why isn't it in the, in the history? There are things that we can do and should have done after the referendum of 2011, where 72% of Davidson County residents, 69% of the residents of this neighborhood voted in favor of keeping the fairgrounds, we should have seen action. We didn't because they had 
other objectives in past administrations and past boards. I'm very thankful for this board and for this administration for moving forward with this because with this plan coming forward, we're going to see sound absorbing walls. We're going to see better mufflers and it's going to make a million dollars a year versus $5 a year, which is what we got for the soccer stadium. Thank you for your time and have a good evening. How's it going? Uh, I'm William. This is Adam. We both live in the neighborhood. We've been informed that we're completely out of time, but we didn't want to leave without voicing our support for the track. How yeah. excited we are um, as sort of younger people in the city and in the neighborhood to have this in the, in the, in the neighborhood. Yeah. We live right here on Moore, so this is right in our backyard. He's 5'15", I'm 5'21", and, and we support this. So thank you guys. Let's make it happen. Thank you. My name's Brent Perry. I live at 1425 Electric Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. I've been coming to this racetrack since I was in diapers. 63 years old. I just got back from Daytona. Probably spent $8,000 down there at that racetrack. So if that tells you anything, we need to support this racetrack. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Danny Farrell. I'm from right here in South Nashville for 57 years at 4833 Humber Drive for the last 30. My family for the last 31 years has sponsored race cars at this track or owned cars at this track. Now the thing I tell you this evening that means more to me than anything is you guys hold the crown jewel in your hands. Granted, it's time for the fair board and the neighborhood to be neighborly, to give us what we give you guys. We gave you a soccer field, you took our fare away from us. Now you've got the opportunity to make it up to us by giving Bristol this opportunity to take the crown jewel of racing and give it back to us. And you all get to look at the great things that you've done for South Nashville. I've here, lived here all my life, and I just want you to know that you guys can make a difference, and you can make my neighborhood proud again that you guys did the right thing by bringing Bristol in to fix the crown jewel. God bless you, and thank you for my time. Thank you. Wade Buttry, Fairview, Tennessee, 37062. I'm a four-time track champion here at this track and uh, started racing this track when I was 14. I'm 55 now, 56 now. But I spent a lot of many hours here at this track and uh, I'm coming with a different vision. It's great for the city. I uh, love to see what Nashville's done and what they brought to, the, to a different state of people. I mean, there's all kinds of people like different things. My life, uh, was involved around racing my whole life. That's all I cared about. Had three daughters. My oldest daughter was born while I was out here winning my first championship. Uh, rushed to Williamson County to see her, but none of my daughters really cared about racing, but there was a comment made that when you feel that passion, then I took my two daughters to actually the Bristol track, and they said, Dad, not a race. When we got there and they felt it, they've been race fans ever since. So I think there's opportunity to give a lot of other people something to experience besides just the stick and ball sports that's around here. Uh, I just wanted to come to show my support for this track. I'm still racing today. I'm not racing at this track, but I race every weekend and it all evolved from this track right here. It's so much history here. I see Mike Alexander here. I see Sutherland here with her dad, Sterling. These people that a lot of us kids with the youth come up, that's all they dream about. That's all they want to do. That's all I ever want to do. And this track provides that opportunity for the young generation to do that. We thank you for your time. Thank you. 37067. Uh, it's been said several times about the history of this racetrack. This is the second oldest racetrack in the United States, second only to the Milwaukee Mile, has Indianapolis Motor Speedway beat by five years. When NASCAR came back to Nashville a few years ago at the National Super Speedway in Lebanon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., one of the pioneers of the sport, said that, Yes, NASCAR is back in Nashville, but they went to the wrong track. They needed to come back to the Nashville Fairgrounds. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s father, Dale Earnhardt Sr., seven-time NASCAR champion. He's one of only three people to ever do that. When, Dale, when his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr., started racing, he sent his son to the Nashville Fairgrounds, and he told him, if you can race and win at the Nashville Fairgrounds, you can race and win on any track in America. I'm probably saying a lot of the stuff that a lot of these other people have said, but it's because of my passion. I've, I was an actor for 10 years. I did gymnastics. I did all sorts of stuff. Nothing has captivated me like the sport of auto racing. And 
I genuinely love it. I've made my best friends in the whole world. I never really had friends in high school, but my best friends in the whole world are sitting right behind me. This is my family. And you can take away the racetrack, you can take away the noise, but you can't take away the passion. The passion that each and every one of us have. Whether if you're me, you've only been doing this for 19 years or you've been doing this for since 1904. You can take a lot of stuff away, but you can't take away our passion for this sport. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Ham. I live in Franklin, Tennessee at 37067. I was born in St. Thomas Hospital in 1943, and I've been in Nashville, Tennessee all that time, and I raced at this racetrack in 70 to, to 78, and had a wonderful time here, and met a lot of good people, and there's a lot of good people that live in this neighborhood, and they're great people, and I know that they will enjoy this racetrack flourishing and making money for the city. The money that it can be brought in here is astronomical. And the money that Bristol will be put into the racetrack to make it a beautiful, beautiful racetrack. Everybody will be pr really proud of this place, I promise you. And I would thank y'all for letting me have the time. Thank you. Brenda McKee, I have been out of here for 70 years, and I have an emotional <coughs> draw to this place, and y'all don't seem to have it. Y'all just want to tear it down. I came out of here when there was a Cascade swimming pool. I came out here to the races. I came out here to the fairs. I've been my life out here, and y'all don't care. Y'all didn't do these things. This is my home. Nashville is my home. I don't want to leave it. Why should I leave it? Just because y'all want to tear it down. I don't want to tear it down. I want to live out here my lifetime for races, for other things. Why should I do it? Because you want to tear it down. No, I don't want to tear it down. This is my home. I don't want to tear it down. Hi there. My name is Gary Neal, 174 Cumberland Drive, 37075. Appreciate every one of y'all. And just like the gentleman said earlier, y'all have got a lot of hard decisions, but this is not one of them. Whenever you've got Bristol, and you can just look, if you've met the guys, if you've just talked to them, they're class acts, and that's what we need. This, uh, this track has had ownerships or leaseholders that come and go, and they can't spend the money that they want to spend, if they, not unless they spend it out of their own pocket. And what's been said before, I'm just over and over saying it over, they've got money and they're going to spend it. So I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I appreciate y'all, and thank you for the job that you do. Thanks. Thank Chris you. Leonard, address is 225 Burgundy Hill Road, 37211. Uh, I mainly just want to point out the fact that uh, cities all over the country are uh, doing what they can to go out and try to secure racing right now. You've got Chicago. Uh, they are actually converting part of their streets into a street course. Um, we've, uh, we've got F1 going into Vegas. Um, obviously, the uh, motorsport industry is growing, and I think it would be a great uh, chance for us to jump on and get in early and uh, be able to secure revenue for the city for a long period of time. Thank you. Thank you. Norm Parton, I live on Brent Lawn Court in Nashville, 37220. I think I'm the last speaker of the night for the proponents. I want to thank everybody for coming out, and I want the crowd to know this is the best fair board that has been intact at this place since 1970. I want to thank each and every one of you for listening, paying attention, asking questions, and trying to make the best decisions for this city and the fairgrounds. Uh, we've been through a lot as us racers of having insecurity for years. Here's a chance for security for racers. I beg of you to meet with racers. I beg of you to understand them, talk to them, see them, and listen to them. 
And in conclusion, I want to thank everybody here that has come on both sides. This is an important issue. And I think our side, the defense rest. One time. Thank you. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition, please line up at the lectern. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for your time, and thank you to everyone here who's shown up to uh, voice their opinion tonight. I, I really uh, appreciate seeing what we're engaged in here as a community. My name is Tyler Sachs. I live at 854 Glen Avenue. That's 37204, about eight-tenths of a mile from the Speedway. I want to briefly share a list of some of the top NASCAR stadiums in the country. Indianapolis Motor Speedway, seven miles outside of Indianapolis. Daytona International Speedway, 54 miles outside of Orlando. Texas Motor Speedway, 34 miles outside of Fort Worth. Talladega, 53 miles from Birmingham. And our very own Bristol, 17 miles outside of Johnson City. I could read that list for uh, quite a long time, but the pattern would be clear. America's great motor speedways are not located in densely populated residential neighborhoods. They're located outside of the city where fans of the sport, uh, myself included, can enjoy it without placing the burden of the noise and the traffic on the people who live around the stadium. Simply put, this is not the place for NASCAR. Uh, Nashville thrives on, on tourism, on people visiting the city, on sport, but at what cost are we willing to do so? It's a question that we all have to ask ourselves. And of course, the question that is before this board a vote uh, for this proposal would simply cement uh, this stadium as a reminder of our prioritization of the interest of business over the people who live here. It's for these reasons that I, my family, and my many, many neighbors urge the commission uh, to reject this proposal. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. My name is Doug Perkins. I live at 724 Benton Avenue, 37204. Uh, for 40 years, I've been a social researcher of urban residential neighborhoods. I've done multiple projects uh, with the Metro Planning Department. And the simple fact is that uh, race car uh, driving, race car tracks, and residential neighborhoods are incompatible uses, plain and simple. Uh, we live right next to the I-65 sound wall on Benton Avenue. And Soundwall does a good job of blocking the sound from I-65, but every summer, boy, do we hear the races loud. Um, so the Soundwall's ineffective for that along I-65. I'm hopeful if this does uh, project goes through that this new Soundwall will do a better job of blocking it, but I, you know, I remain skeptical. Um, we're concerned about the traffic has been talked about and the noise and the pollution represented by auto racing and the excess traffic. And people have compared the track to the soccer stadium, and um, there's no comparison. There is one similarity. Uh, we went to the, the game uh, yesterday, and there's a little electric toy car that runs around the, the field on the stadium before and after the game. And I can say that uh, when uh, NASCAR switches to electric cars, I'll withdraw my opposition to it. Hi, uh, my name is Becca, and I live right over there, 37203. Um, one thing I want to point out is that anybody, well, I can't speak for everybody, myself, uh, I'm not anti-NASCAR. In fact, I had a chance to interview the entire Alabama gang last year. I fell in love with Red Farmer. I took my dad to Dale Sr.'s final win at Talladega. I've been to Indianapolis Motor Speedway many, many times. Th the issue at hand is that this was not always a great neighborhood. It wasn't always thriving. It wasn't always desirable. Property values were not always great. There were drugs and hookers and crime. But the city wanted to revitalize this area. They wanted to rezone it. They wanted to allow dense population. They allowed three and four houses to be built on one piece of land. 
we all bought into that. We believed in that. It became an art district. It became a neighborhood where 13% of the people here are enrolled in college, where over 50% of the people are white collar workers. And there are over 18,000 residents just in Wedgwood, Houston alone. People always want to say, you knew the track was there when you bought. I absolutely did. I knew that there was a 15,000 seat stock car track. I also know that according to a study on Nashville.gov that was done on the financial viability, that total of the four regional races, the attendance for paid tickets was about 15,000, give or take. And they want to build 30,000 seats. It's not enough parking that they're planning. We don't have adequate solutions for the infrastructure that is not existing right now, such as sidewalks and the ability to drive down certain streets. I'm very concerned about the litter. I'm concerned about the noise. So this isn't about we hate NASCAR. It's just simply about you wanted to create a better, livable, more beautiful, attractive neighborhood, and you did. And now you want to undo all of that by creating a track that is completely opposite thank of you. what this neighborhood is about. Thank you so for thank your you. time. Hi, my name is Rochelle Felix, and I live at 410 Rosedale Avenue, just about half a mile away. Uh, my biggest concern outside of the noise is the traffic. Uh, when soccer games are happening, the disruption to the neighborhood is immense but manageable because it's only a handful of games. I can't imagine adding 80 more events to the area that already can't handle the events at Geotis currently. I had a few days when I was working last year where I was stuck at my house, unable to get to work because of the traffic from the games. I truly worry that I will have to move if this passes because it makes it almost unlivable as someone who needs to leave their house outside of a nine to five Monday through Friday schedule. When I bought my home where I did, I bought my home where I did because it felt like this community was still a community, not overrun by tourism, and it felt like a piece of old Nashville remained. It's not lost on me that things change and areas evolve, but this change doesn't benefit a lot of people that live here. I'm sick of feeling like the people who live here and work here and build their lives here are not valued over profit and tourism. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, commissioners. My name is Mike Miles. I live at 540A Moore Avenue, 37203. Uh, I'm not speaking in opposition to racing today. I remember where I was two days ago, 22 years ago, when Dale Earnhardt crashed into the wall at Daytona, and it was a meaningful moment for me, and I've been a fan of racing for all my life. What I'd like to talk to you about today is the history of Speedway Motorsports and their activities and what they do to cities when they decide that they don't want to have a race anymore in that city. You can look it up. It's happened twice, once in Texas, once in Kentucky. In Texas, Furco versus NASCAR, they were sued successfully and settled out of court for antitrust concerns to bring a race back to Texas that they had taken away. In Kentucky, the case was also settled out of court. If NASCAR is so desperate to be here, why do we need to get in bed with one of their cronies in the form of SMI? Could another interested owner, a local businessman, another pro proponent of racing, anyone really, do the same or better? I would like to ask that the Fair Commission and members of the, of the Metro Council take a public bid process to the, to the future of the, of the fairgrounds and the, and the racetrack here. Thank you. Hi, Heidi, 1711, Neil Terrace, 37203. Thank you first for your service to the city that is uncompensated. Some city leaders say that it is just business, not personal. Imagine battling your way home through weekly event traffic where you can't get away from the noise once you're at your house. Forget gardening, walking your dogs, caring for your family. Now imagine that you decide to sell to get away, and then you learn that you will lose 30% or more of your home value because NASCAR is in your neighborhood. There is nothing more personal than how we live our lives. That's not just business. But it's not just sound, even though BMS has admitted that, they're loud, that their races will be louder, not quieter, after improvements. It is a terrible financial deal for the city. With over $100 million loaned, not their own money, BMS can back out 30 days notice, leaving taxpayers on the line for this debt. 
As Nashville expands, traffic is getting worse everywhere. There aren't solutions on the horizon. This area does not have the infrastructure to support this. Racing is toxic. One race weekend cranks out 120,000 pounds of carbon dioxide. That is enough to power three homes or fuel seven cars for an entire year. But who pays the price when 10 multi-day race weekends, 20 other track rentals, and the 40 new events for BMS and CVC aren't enough? When the two huge stadiums feed apart, compete to repay the city and can't. Taxpayers, people who live here who are contributing to the local culture and economic landscape, supporters telling people to stop complaining or to move away so that they can enjoy a few nights out, that doesn't represent our values. I know you've spent a lot, on, a, a lot of time on this proposal, but you have other options. I implore you, please say no to this and find one of them. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Kyle Frohawk. I live at 1608 Martin Street here in Wedgwood, Houston, 37203. I've been in Nashville almost all my life. Went to a Tennessee college, worked at the Bristol Motor Speedway. So I've seen these races. Um, and I want to correct something that's been incorrectly platformed here. And it's not about the racetrack. We're not arguing against the racetrack. We're arguing against the proposal that's on the floor. So when we say that we want to keep this racetrack, the the neighbors, especially myself, we're not arguing about the racetrack. We're arguing about this proposal, which Heidi just mentioned has a lot of errors in it, especially the financial piece, the health piece. There's so many different parts of this that are just not being communicated properly. In fact, I got a text as a neighbor that said they want to kill the racetrack. That's not true. That's a lie. That's not true. So I, I'm here as a neighbor who's been in Nashville almost all my life, who raises our kids here. We love this neighborhood. We love things that are good for people. We love people to enjoy themselves. But having a racetrack in this neighborhood is bad for our health. It's bad for our neighbors. It's bad for our community with the cars, with the air, with the light pollution, with the runoff. Browns Creek is 100 feet from this racetrack. Do you think that runoff is going to hit that water, that lake, that, that river, and it's going to hit the Cumberland within an hour of the first raindrop? I mean, we, we can't even imagine having this kind of this kind of impact that NASCAR would have in this neighborhood. We're not against the racetrack. Take the money that is, that is earmarked in our budget and improve the racetrack. And improve the racetrack. Have folks race as it is right now, but we don't need uh, NASCAR to come into this neighborhood. This is a bad deal for everybody in this city because it's taken this neighborhood down. It's bad for us uh, and it's bad for Nashville. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Diamond zip code 37115. I'm against the stadium simply because there wasn't enough community engagement. Folks are in here comparing this to the Titan Stadium and the Titan Stadium had five community engagement meetings across the neighbor, across the city just to see what people thought about it and how they felt about it. Um, we're supposed to, the people who are against this are supposed to take a back seat because y'all want us to be okay with the history. Um, I'm tired, I'm second. I'm tired of me being a Nashvillian and born here and coming second to tourists or people who are out of county. I shouldn't have to take your history into consideration when folks in Vine Hill are literally saying that they can't even sleep when they're hearing the racing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brooke Wilson. I'm at uh, Southgate Avenue 37203. Again, not against NASCAR, NASCAR, but very largely the people who spoke here aren't residents in the WeHo neighborhood. The expansion does not belong in a dense community. It negatively impacts the residents. This is not evolution. There has been little discussion about that impact. There is so much new housing development, it inevitably is a negative for the existing residents and those moving into those new homes. Lots of talk about money in Bristol, but nothing about the residents, the children, and the school across the street, the resulting trash and traffic, and the quality of life for the immediate community. Please consider all of those factors. It really impacts these people. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dana Terabessi. I live at 1715 Allison Place, uh, less than about 1,500 feet from here, 37203. Um, thank you for listening to everyone's uh, opinions tonight. I. I am not against racing. I moved in this, unlike other people's comments, I've moved in this neighborhood well aware of the races. I've been to races. I've even taken a trip to Bristol and it was a lot of fun. Clearly these folks think racing is fun just as I do, as they have all come out from everywhere in the surrounding counties, not just in this neighborhood. But 
Nashville just spent over three years, a couple of years ago in Nashville Next to look at what the next phase of this city's development and what things are, they want things to look like, how like our, our, my neighbors and my friends got to participate in how they wanted to see the city grow. I also love history and I love preserving the things that are important, but I'm also not saying that we should tear the race right down and shouldn't have racing here. What I'm against, as Kyle said, is I'm against this proposal. It's not the right thing. A NASCAR expansion in a very densely populated neighborhood is not the right use. I don't understand why we're even considering that kind of use in a, in a densely populated neighborhood that the city just spent a lot of money to increase the density. You're al they're also building a mixed use apartment building that's gonna specifically have a daycare and we're gonna put racing right beside it. And it's not even just about racing. If, if the NASCAR expansion was good enough on its own, why do we need to have 20 Convention Visitors Bureau events? Why do we need to have all these other events to make it, what, to make it profitable? Oh, because it can't stand on its own. That might be the reason, but you know what? We don't fully know that because there's not been a lot of transparency against the, uh, around the details of this proposal. And there's a lot of things online, but I can't make heads or tails on what is actually fact. And it looks like, based on what I've read, that if there's a, a shortfall, we're on the hook for it as, as Davidson County taxpayers, not these folks who have all come in from other parts of our, of our county. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you for your time. My name is Dr. Kate Klaus. I've owned my home on Moore Avenue, 37203. It's around the corner from here for nine years. And I am one of the many neighbors of the fairgrounds who are opposed to the demolition and rebuilding of the racetrack. I love that I'm not the only speaker tonight who did the research and looked up the location of, <laughs> of the other NAS, uh, top 10 NASCAR uh, racetracks. But as this earlier speaker said, none are located in dense, densely crowded downtowns. Where are they? they're typically put outside of city centers near airports, business parks, RV, RV parks. And what do these places have that we don't? Plenty of space. Space and far fewer people living nearby to be the subject of noise, pollution, and the crowd effects. If someone were to po propose putting a brand new NASCAR racetrack in the middle of the city today, it would seem preposterous. But yet that's exactly what BMS is proposing here, to demolish the existing track and rebuild it so they can bring NASCAR to our neighborhood. If Nashville didn't already have a NASCAR racetrack, I might understand why there's such a desire to have one locally. Clearly, a lot of people love NASCAR, but there already is a world-class NASCAR-ready racetrack called the Nashville Super Speedway, even, that is just 40 miles out of town in Lebanon. What does that space offer that our, fair, uh, that our fairgrounds can't? Space, lots of space to be loud and for plenty of traffic. At a neighborhood meeting a few weeks ago, I asked a representative from BMS why we needed a second NASCAR racetrack when we already have a great one so close by, and he couldn't answer me. And he also couldn't answer the what environmental as, um, assessment was done to address the aspects of a NASCAR race in our neighborhood. Four neighborhood groups have united in opposition to this proposal. I urge you to please listen to these neighbors and reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you, friends. I, my name is Kristen. I live on Elliott Avenue in Melrose, a mile away from the racetrack in 37204. I've appreciated um, sitting in on the things I've been privileged to do so over the past uh, week or so. I'm concerned because I get to show up and speak for two minutes, but I don't get to ask any questions and neither do my neighbors and neither do the local racers. I'm concerned because expensive marketing has convinced those who enjoy our historical local racing that we neighbors want racing to shut down entirely. We do not. There is a huge difference from living half a mile away from a historic racetrack that has actually lulled my daughter to sleep at, on occasion and living half a mile from a Bristol Motor Speedway with a capacity of 30,000 plus attendees, weekend long events, nightmares of traffic, road closures and parking issues. I'm concerned because I see all the two-way dialogue between our commissioners and Bristol's lawyers, staff and consultants and I haven't seen the same two-way dialogue with the neighbors or with the local racers. 
I'm concerned that the board still hasn't seen the promised event schedule report or the noise mitigation guidelines report they need before they can make sound decisions, but you're still scheduling working sessions and you're still drafting proposed amendments without having these documents in your hands, without knowing when they're coming. I'm concerned because race day, Bristol will not be bound strictly to our noise curfew laws. They're only bound to schedule events until 10 p.m. and that delays beyond their control might happen. Um, I'm concerned that rain delays, accident stoppages will push things beyond what the narrative is telling us the, the curfew is. I'm simply concerned and I don't understand why we're rushing. I don't understand why we're still doing working groups when you haven't received all the information. I don't understand why residents can be heard in two minute Thank increments you. Your time is without up. any Thank you so recourse. much. Thank you. Hello. My name is Stephanie Levinson, and this is my son, Gray. And we live at 923 Halcyon Avenue, and 37204 is our zip code. Uh, we're actually here today to speak to you as the president of the 12 South Neighborhood Association and the unofficial co-president of the uh, Neighborhood Association. Um, as some of the people that have spoken before have mentioned, we are not here in opposition of racing. We are not even here necessarily in opposition of Bristol. However, we are here as a uh, representative of our neighborhood's concerns. Uh, we have several people that are concerned about quality of life. I think that you've heard most of the comments from several of our neighbors about what they are concerned about. Um, the big ones being safety, traffic, noise, uh, just general quality of life. Uh, NASCAR is a different experience than a uh, local soccer game. You're encouraging people, a lot more people from out of town, uh, increasing foot traffic, increasing auto traffic. And there's a lot of safety concerns that people have with that. Um, personally, not opposed to any of the racing and keeping the track. Uh, we just are a little concerned with the lack of transparency and the amount of information we have about what this deal will look like moving forward. And so we're here just to voice our neighbors' concerns on that behalf. Thank you so much for letting us speak. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diane and I live in a neighborhood. I live on Neal Terrace, 37203. So I'm literally two blocks from here. And I bought my house six years ago because I loved the neighborhood. I was well aware of racing. And you know what, y'all? I respect you guys so much that you have so much passion for NASCAR. I think that is amazing. I am not anti-NASCAR. I am not anti-race. I am anti doing this in a neighborhood, not just my neighborhood. But if y'all had a, had a neighborhood that you loved, a school that was right next to the track, elder care or whatever, an autistic child, whatever you're dealing with in your neighborhood, and then you're bringing NASCAR. I know everyone is complaining about the noise. Noise is definitely a factor. But also, there's so many unanswered questions. Like, I don't understand the rush for this proposal. I don't understand it. There's, there's no transparency, and it scares me. Um, you know, I drove home from Kroger yesterday, unaware that there was something happening at the soccer field. It took me an hour to get home. Kroger is literally a mile and a half away. And if that's what it's going to be like, imagine if there's an emergency. Emergency personnel can't get through that traffic. So I'm asking you, please, 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 this proposal, please don't rush to this. There's so many unanswered questions. I think we need to have full transparency. Um, again, thank you for your time. Thank you, everyone that came out. You know, I just think there already is a racetrack. Let's have NASCAR stay there, please. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you, commissioners, for your service. My name is Terry Vo, and I live um, in 37210. I've been part of the Chestnut Hill Neighborhood Association for the past six years six years in the immediate past president. I've attended several fair board meetings and at the end of them, there are so many unanswered questions. I just really ask, and many of my neighbors have already shared several concerns. I just ask that as the board, you all make sure that all the information you need is provided. Studies that need to happen, happen. The concerns in the proposal are addressed and we continue to engage all stakeholders, especially the neighborhoods that surround the Speedway. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Terry. 
Evening, Shay Sapp. I live at 151 Rains Avenue, 37203, just up the hill from here. A lot has taken place since the last public hearing. There's been fair board meetings, working sessions, coffee meetings. You all have spent a ton of time on those. I appreciate that. And I want to let you know um, that your hard work doesn't go unnoticed. We've been taking part in an unprecedented discussion regarding this proposal due to the location and level of activity. For that reason, you should have cause for concern about this proposal, and I know some of you do. There's untested, unproven noise mitigation, unreliable curfews and limitations, unknown community impacts, and unprecedented urban nuisances. Once these agreements are signed, the groups using your property will use every inch and take every liberty they are allowed. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it highlights the importance of this moment. This is the time to put firm restrictions and limitations in place to protect the city, neighboring communities, and the fairgrounds. And if the racing group doesn't agree to them, then we need to move on to another deal. Correct the definition of a race car, implement real penalties and fines for violations, and let those benefit the surrounding communities. Have BMS fully invest in the speedway, like the surrounding communities will have to, by making sure there's no way this falls back on taxpayers. Plan for and fund community impact measures by addressing parking, traffic, safety during all racing events. I've emailed y'all everyone a full list. I don't have to keep going. The racing that's taken place here recently uh, and what is being proposed are two very different things. A NASCAR race isn't something you learn to live with. I implore you to think bigger than this moment, 30 years from now, where will you be, where will I be? I don't, I don't know, but I do know there will still be thousands of people living around the fairgrounds and being affected by what takes place here on a regular basis. Please do not punt this to city council. You oversee this facility and you should decide to move forward with things in a different direction if you see fit. We all know this doesn't make sense. We ask that you reject this plan and support renovations in another way that takes local and regional racing into priority. The fairgrounds should be an asset for our communities and the people who Thank call this wonderful time. city home. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, Jason Bergeron, 14th Avenue South, 37212. <clears throat> what almost everyone can agree on at the moment is the deal that's on paper in the documents actually released in November is a really bad deal. It's loaded up with loopholes and flaws. Look at the race car loophole that we keep talking about. And so our Metro Council members here understand what that is. There's a loophole in the documents that would allow unlimited racing any time, any day, all the time, if the cars go 89 decibels or less. That's the way the documents are written. That's so bad that even Bristol at the last couple community meetings said, no, no, we're going to fix that. Okay, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. And I'm thrilled that the fair board is telling us changes are coming. But we haven't seen these or analyzed these. And really, tonight's public hearing should be held after whatever proposed updates are coming um, are actually visible. Or we should have another public hearing. You, the fair board, are in a really tough spot because after three and a half years of negotiations, it's clear the mayor hasn't been working very hard on negotiating this deal for the community. They've just given Bristol mostly everything Bristol wants. Even now, you know, if the mayor's office tells Metro Legal to not negotiate all the desired changes you talked about at last week's working session, Metro Legal will be bound to follow the mayor's orders. So the only solution to this is you can't sit quietly. You can't abide by the nonsense about a deal that's been heavily negotiated. Anytime Bristol tells you a point was heavily negotiated, that's a tell that those are the worst, most one-sided provisions of the deal, like that ridiculous termination, right? That Bristol can walk away anytime they want if they don't like a fair board regulation. So you need to say clearly and loudly, you need to see specific changes. No, look no further than guaranteeing and backstopping the full debt. Don't fall for the red herring argument about the soccer deal and their 10 acres. If this deal is financially sound, Bristol should have to backstop it. They're bringing the events. I understand that the stakes are high and it's not easy for you to stand up to everything being thrown in your face, but the community is fighting hard and we're, all we're asking you is to fight with us, not for people who are very well represented by all the money in the world. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Um, my name is Laura Flaherty. I live up the hill here on Wingrove, 37203. Um, I've lived here about 12 years. Um, I, I just echo what all of my other um, neighbors have said today. I'm opposed to this proposal. Again, just this proposal. I'm indifferent to racing, really. It's not my thing, but I really don't care about it. So whether one way or the other. This proposal, though, is half-baked inaccurate information is going out just because there isn't isn't full information um we still just echoing what everyone else has said 
what's the rush to get something through that is going to affect this neighborhood and the city at large for years and decades to come? Um, we've got time. The racetrack's not going anywhere. There's a charter protecting it. We all are very familiar with that. Um, I, I just don't see the rush to push through something that still has so many unanswered questions and so many, so much potential impact to the neighborhood outside of the even racing. I, I don't think a lot of people have really talked about the consideration for these TBD Convention Visitors Corporation events. Are we talking like, like CMA Fest? Are we talking 4th of July, New Year's Eve? Those things are insane. Um, they, they can barely hold, be held downtown. Uh, what type of events are we talking about? We don't know. No one seems to have answers to that. Um, again, I, again, echoing what others have said, please don't punt this to city council. We've got a great opportunity right now to nail this down and figure this out and go forward in a good path for all parties involved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Austin Luttrell. I live here on Byram Avenue, 37203. Uh, I could probably throw a baseball and hit this building from my yard. Um, I've lived there for 12 years. I am very familiar with the noise of the racetrack and the soccer game and the fair and all of the activities that go on around here. And to be honest, it, it doesn't really bother me because I moved here to be in this neighborhood. I knew that it was going to be a part of the deal. Um, I would urge you that this proposal uh, is everything that a lot of my other uh, opponents have said. Uh, it seems very half-baked. There's a lot of um, ambiguous language, a lot of things that have not yet been figured out. Don't rush into this. Uh, there's no need to figure this out. I love that the racetrack is here. I think it's so cool that the history of this event space uh, is so rich. Um, and I don't want to see the racetrack go away. I would love to see there, I would love to see a way in which we can preserve and celebrate the history in a much better way than it is currently. But I do not want to see 30,000 more seats added here. And <laughs> that was one thing I didn't quite understand about this proposal originally. But if the plan is to tear this racetrack down and build a new one, like what history are we even preserving here? It's just a land grab so that this company can come in and promote races and all these other uh, event opportunities. So again, uh, thanks for your time. And I would urge you to uh, not take this to city council. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Kristen Heggie. I live on Allison Place, um, right up the street, 37203. I wasn't planning to speak tonight, but um, I don't envy your position. So thank you for being here. Um, you know, I've owned my house here for almost 10 years. And I remember five, six, seven years ago when there was a beer fest in the middle of the racetrack. And it was like the first time the neighbor was like, we actually get to use it. And then some of us started riding our bikes around the track and it just, when I look at the proposal, it doesn't allow for those things anymore. If I, you know, I wrote a few notes. The state's contributing 17 million. The CVC is contributing 17 million. And then going forward, the CVC is backing the revenue bonds $650,000 a year. From my understanding, we have $25 million now. Imagine what we could do by preserving the local racing that does satisfy the charter and using this money and continuing to do the beer fest, continuing to make it part of the community. Um, there's a couple of things in here. You know, it says that BMS has the commitment to bring NASCAR here. It does not say they have the obligation. And that's concerning as well. We're going to build, we're going to spend all this money, and then they may say it, the NASCAR race is going somewhere else. Well, then what did we accomplish? So, I, I, you know, I'm with all of the people who've spoken up here about the disruption to the neighborhood. But again, I also feel like the proposal just isn't baked enough to give us, to give the neighborhood a chance to really make it part of the community. Thank you. Uh, Cynthia, 756 Roycroft. And one of the things I would ask is to make sure that everybody, if they've shared their address, that they are in where they're supposed to be. Um, I also wanted to share that with the track, it was built in 1904. And it is a historic site. 
NASCAR came around around 1947, a long time later. Now we're in a new era, and that's part of what you guys are trying to address, and you're trying to hear both sides. So I want to personally thank all of you for doing that. I think that NASCAR did a great job of showing up. They have a flyer that came out that was introduced after we submitted all our concerns, where they had very strategically marketed against that. They had a fabulous turnout here, which is great. Um, I am a NASCAR lover. I've shared that before, and I absolutely have a passion for the racing, but I do not want to see it in a community where we're right adjacent to, as everybody else has shared, where we have families, where we have schools, and where we have concerns about pollution. The pollution, the bigger factor of that is you're not going to see it for quite some time. But when it hits, it's going to be hitting all of our future generation. So when I see a pregnant woman walking down the street or I see families and I see children going to school, I'm gravely concerned about having a racetrack that is in close proximity like that. So again, I want to thank you. I know that we are dealing with OSHA. We're dealing with the EPA and we're dealing with the Noise Pollution Act of 1972. And we're also dealing with existing factors like the soccer stadium where parking was not properly allocated for. We do not want that to spill over from the racetrack side and say that they can make up for that. Those are two separate projects. So again, I want to thank all of you for your time and I want to thank everybody that's been here to be able to share tonight. Thank you. Hi there, my name is John Spragans. Uh, I live on 2nd Avenue South, 37210. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the civil discussion that has been had by both sides tonight. To me, it comes down to three T's. Number one, we're going to tear down the existing structure. A lot of these folks in this room and who have been here tonight and have left to go back to where they came from said a few years ago that, uh, that the sweet baby Jesus was born under the cantilevered structure at the fairgrounds. And that's not now we're going to tear it down all of a sudden. That's a, that's a big difference from what we were told several years ago. So we're going to get rid of this historic structure all of a sudden. That's why there's a charter amendment all of a sudden. That's why we're going to be needing a two-thirds council vote to replace this. So if we're talking about preserving something, that's not what the people here are actually proposing. They're proposing tearing something down. Number two, we're putting taxpayers on the hook. Taxpayers are going to backstop this deal. And you guys know this. You've read it. You've studied it. I think it's very obvious to the rest of us who have studied it. Taxpayers are on the hook here if this thing doesn't live up to whatever projections have been made. And I'm not sure there have been very reliable projections made. And number three, it's going to be too damn loud. And it is going to increase the noise, not just in this neighborhood. And the sound wall will help, no doubt about it. 50% reduction over existing racing volumes, existing racing volumes, not NASCAR racing, 50% over existing racing. Now let's talk about the study that you all were showed, that pretty map with all the colors on it that was in the Tennessean. It shows all of a sudden they're going to hear it in 12 South, Belmont, Hillsboro, Woodland and Waverly, Antioch. All of a sudden there's going to be racing noise heard all over this county. And I hope you'll think about that when you make your decision before you decide as the independent fair board that you are to pass this along to the next level of government. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Hi there, Susan Heffernan, 1710 Neal Terrace, 37203. Um, as he said, we've had a lot of proposals throughout the years of one thing or another that either have not come into fruition or that we've plain old been lied to. We've been told so-and-so, like Tony Formosa, has the lease for the track. And then all of a sudden, there are other people racing rather than Tony's people. And it's like, well, where did these people come from? If Tony's supposed to have a lease on the track, why isn't it Tony's people with their mufflers, etc.? And he, I drove over there and he said, it's not my race. So we're tired of, of this. We're tired of being told one thing and having it turn out to be totally different 
So that's why people keep asking you to please look into this, consider it carefully, and don't fall for these people's promises when we've been promised so many things over and over again, and they have not happened the way that we have been told that they would have happened. And yes, we do miss the Nash or the Tennessee State Fair here in Nashville, rather than out in Wilson County. It's thirty miles there, and it's thirty miles back. So, thanks very much for your time, and thank you for having us speak. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey there, Josh Baxter, 610 Hamilton Avenue, just right up the road. Sorry I'm in scrubs, I came straight from the hospital. I'm not against NASCAR, not against racing, I think it's great. I'm against this proposal. We had a meeting on the 14th of January with BMS. We've still not heard back from anything from our community. So the question I leave with you tonight is, is this the best proposal? And I hope you consider that for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Yes, ma'am. I think I just want a few words. Um, I'm Marilyn Warren. I'm at 1700 Allison Place, corner of Southgate, two blocks from here. And I came here to Wedgwood, Houston after much consideration because I'd lived here before in Nashville and I knew that this was an interesting area to be in. And I built my forever home on that corner. And I am really concerned about the noise and the property value situation. Um, I don't think I'm going to make my money back. I built a really nice little house up there. And I'm really concerned that my neighborhood is going to be terrorized by the noise because it already is. They can't be out on my deck and have a glass of iced tea when race, when race day comes. I can't even be inside for the most part, depending on who's racing. So I just want to say that for all the people who came to Wedgwood, Houston, when it was a kind of nobody place, but brought their beautiful talents and the wonderful jobs that they had and their some of their families, some of the families have actually left. And, um, but they came here to, to colonize and, and bring something to this area. I think, I think that they, these people have had a lot to say and they're, and they're smart people, but the most important thing is that this is their life's investment here. And if bringing more people into the neighborhood and, and millions of dollars, they're not, going to, they're not going to benefit from that. Somebody else is benefiting from that, and their property values are on the line. So please take into consideration people who actually lent their money early to this area. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. And I thank you for all being here tonight. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.